Get ready, everyone. It's September. We have two months to go before the U.S. presidential election on November 3rd. The campaign is kicking into a higher gear. Everyone is paying a lot more attention to the candidates, the issues, and of course, the public opinion polls. With that in mind, here's a primer on what to look for when you see public opinion polls, what's new this year, and why you should care. Public opinion polls are still the best, most reliable way to measure what the American public feels about any particular issue at any given time. Sure, we live in a world today that is saturated with social media content, with punditry and live campaign feeds. But if you're talking about trying to measure the relative popularity levels of candidate A versus candidate B, you're going to need a public opinion poll. But this brings up a question I hear quite often. What happened in 2016? Weren't the polls off? So the shorter answer is no, not really. If, if you looked at the polls leading up to the 2016 election, you saw a couple of things. You saw that Hillary Clinton had a comfortable lead in mid-October, but you also see that lead erode relatively quickly. By election day, we saw that Hillary Clinton had about a two to three percentage point lead over Donald Trump in the polls. And on election day, she ended up winning the national popular vote by about two percentage points. That's pretty darn close. So what happened? After 2016, academics and pollsters got together and they really poured over the data and they tried to figure out what they got right and what they got wrong. Quite often, what they found out was that a lot of polls, including the Reuters Ipsos poll, did not do a very good job of gathering responses from people without a college degree. In the past, not counting enough people without a college degree would not have been such a big deal since they tended to break evenly between Democrats and Republicans. But we're seeing increasingly that people without a college degree, specifically whites without a college degree, are leaning much more heavily towards supporting Republicans. And so by not counting them as much as we should have, it skewed the results a little bit. So what's happened since then? Most polls, including the Reuters Ipsos poll, has included a weight in our data to better account for people without a college degree. So this is no longer an issue. The first thing I tell people when they look at polling data is to remember the implied imprecision with the entire process. We're reading opinions of human beings, routinely busy, sometimes uninformed, always fickle human beings. Opinions change all the time. So one of the first things to look at when you're looking at poll data is to look at the date that the poll was taken. We see quite often that American opinions shift quite rapidly after major news events. Any polling, for example, on gun control, you'll see support for regulations go way up after a major shooting. So the time frame is really important. The second thing to remember when you're looking at a public opinion poll is to understand that it's not really predicting the future. It's telling you specifically how Americans feel right now. Right now, we see in our poll that Joe Biden has about a seven percentage point lead over Donald Trump. That's how the American public feels right now but that might not be how they feel two months from now. Finally, when you're looking at a poll, one of the best things to do is to try to stick with one poll and see if opinions shift over time. The reason is, is that different polls ask questions differently. So our question on gun control might be different from another polls. When you're trying to really measure how Americans feel, it's best to stick with one poll that is asked the same question over and over and over again. That's the only way that you can really measure shifts in American opinion. Thank you.